What's up guys, Smiles here with 9.5Mac, and if you're a fan of good ideas, be sure to subscribe to the channel for future content like this. Today we've got another comparison between the brand new Mac Studio with M1 Max and the base model 14 inch MacBook Pro. If you've got $2,000 to drop on a Mac, you may find yourself choosing between these two machines. Both start at $2,000 respectively, but are meant to kind of serve completely different purposes fundamentally. So today we're gonna compare these two machines from a general standpoint and then go into video editing, some photo editing, and overall performance. The 14 inch MacBook Pro comes with either the M1 Pro or M1 Max chip in multiple variations, but this variant is the lowest end base model with the eight core CPU and 14 core GPU. It's also equipped with 16 gigabytes of unified memory and 512 gigabytes of storage. As far as ports go, you've got a MagSafe port for charging, three Thunderbolt 4 ports, HDMI 2.0, an SD card slot, and a headphone jack. So definitely not bad in terms of I.O. I've personally been using this guy for the past five months or so, and I haven't found myself reaching for a dongle once. Something that Mac Studio doesn't come with is a display. Attached to the MacBook Pro is this beautiful 14.2 inch mini LED display. Apple calls it the Super Retina XDR panel, and that's because it is super sharp with a 260 PPI, and that XDR stands stands for extreme dynamic range, as this display is capable of getting up to 1000 nits of sustained brightness and up to 1600 nits of peak brightness for HDR content. And not only that, but it's gotten 120 hertz pro motion display, so interacting with the UI and applications feels buttery smooth most of the time. The display is easily one of my favorite features of this laptop and why I kept it around after the initial review. There's simply no other $2,000 laptop with a display that compares. Then we've got Mac Studio. This model here is powered by the M1 Max chip, which consists of a 10-core CPU, 24-core GPU, and a 16-core neural processor. This one comes with 32 gigabytes of unified memory and 512 gigabytes of storage. And obviously compared to the MacBook Pro, you've got no display attached to it or included in this setup. So while the price of these computers are the same, you're obviously going to need to buy a monitor to use this machine if you don't already have one. As far as ports go, you firstly got two USB-C ports on the front alongside a UHS-2 SD card slot. And then on the back, you've got four additional USB-C ports in the form of Thunderbolt 4 with its own individual Thunderbolt controller for each port. Then you've got a 10 gigabit ethernet port as standard, two USB-A ports, an HDMI 2.0 port, and a headphone jack. So as far as ports goes on this machine, this is nearly a perfect Mac for my usage. I actually plugged in the studio today at my desk setup, and I've got all of the ports fully occupied and being used as opposed to needing a bunch of dongles and adapters. Before we get into the more standard comparisons, I want to use this opportunity of comparing the speakers on these machines to see how terrible the studio speakers probably are. And yes, if you didn't know, Mac Studio actually has built-in speakers. Speakers. So let's take a listen, shall we? Obviously, it's no contest here. The MacBook Pro speakers are not only a billion times better than Mac Studio, but they're also the best laptop speakers that I've personally ever heard. So of course, it's gonna put Mac Studio to shame. Let's knock the Geekbench CPU test out of the way first. On the M1 MacBook Pro, we got a score of 1708 for single core and 9692 for multi-core. And then we can compare that to Mac Studio, which got a score of 1763 for single core and 12,604 for multi-core. And so, Clearly the single core difference is pretty negligible here, but that multi-core score difference is quite noticeably higher on Mac Studio. Same thing goes for the Geekbench Metal GPU test. MacBook Pro with M1 got a score of 40,700 compared to a score of 57,900 on Mac Studio. And we're about to get into some real world video exporting tests. So you'll see how much that numerical difference factors into the work you'll actually be doing. A lot of people are looking at devices like Mac Studio and the 14 inch MacBook Pro as potential video editing machines and particularly for Final Cut Pro. So I ran a handful of different export benchmarks to really get a real world understanding of how these two machines compare. The first test consisted of 4K 24P H.265 video from my Canon R5. I threw that into a timeline and chopped it up with some added effects and transitions and then exported it into an H.264 video file. 
So the results here are pretty close and more or less what I'd expect for these two machines. Mac Studio completed the export in nearly half the time of the MacBook Pro, but given the fact that the exact times were two minutes and 30 seconds for Mac Studio and four minutes and 30 seconds for MacBook Pro, it's safe to say that either machine will handle these kinds of exports in a breeze. Both machines stayed perfectly quiet when doing the test and the rest of the operating system didn't choke up on either machines, unlike a test I did later on. Next up, I decided to do some 4K60 H.264 video from my Canon camera, pretty much doing the same thing, which is chopping it up and throwing on some added effects and transitions. I then exported this to an H.264 video file once again, and the results here are pretty similar overall, just with a little added time due to the higher frame rate. Mac Studio completed the benchmark in 5 minutes and 20 seconds, while my MacBook Pro took 8 minutes and 40 seconds. That's clearly not a huge difference in time, and obviously not a long time to wait for either machine to complete an export like this. I wanted to test out how footage from a cinema camera would perform between these devices, so I got some 6K raw footage shot on a RED camera. And something is clearly wrong here because yes, the M1 Pro MacBook consistently completed this 8 minute RED export in around half the time of Mac Studio. And I'm struggling to understand why because both computers are running the same version of Mac OS, the same version of Final Cut Pro, and the same version of RED's Apple workflow software. But Mac Studio has the better CPU and GPU on paper. Paper, so why is it slower? At this point, I can't find the exact answer. I guess there may be some bugs that Apple has yet to work out for Mac Studio. I ran this test three different times on both machines, and the M1 Pro MacBook was always twice as fast, or just about. Mac Studio is a brand new machine, and so these kinds of issues are to be expected somewhat, but hopefully Tim Cook watches this video just as he watches every 9 to 5 Mac video and tells the team downstairs to address it, because this is strange. Based on all of the other tests I ran, I feel like Studio would have completed this test in around four minutes compared to M1 Pro six minute export time if there were to be no bugs. Currently, one of the toughest video codecs to work with on any computer is the 8K HEVC video that's outputted from the Canon R5, which is the camera I use to make these videos. So I made a timeline with 8K HEVC video clips from my camera and added some effects and transitions for what ended up being a seven minute video. And Mac Studio absolutely crushes M1 Pro for 8K video exports. I exported the file to HEVC, which is typically even harder on the computer than an H.264 export is. The the fact that you can save nearly two hours in time waiting on an export going with M1 Max is quite astonishing honestly, and given the massive difference in time, you may be thinking there's an issue with my MacBook Pro, but not only did I run the test multiple times, but I've been using this model for nearly six full months and can definitely confirm that 8K exports like this are gonna take you a heck of a lot longer than what you'd experience with M1 Max. And for someone like me who shoots 8K video pretty often, this is a crucial advantage that you've got with Mac Studio here. I also want to test an export to H.264 from raw 8K footage from my Canon camera. And so I pretty much did exactly what I did with the 8K HEVC project in terms of contents. And Mac Studio surprisingly really took longer than I thought it would to export this eight minute 8K video, but it still completed the exports way faster than my MacBook Pro. 45 minutes versus two hours is still a huge difference. And once again, Mac Studio is proving to be the 8K video champ in terms of this comparison. I decided to run yet another Red Raw video test, but this time with some 8K footage, and I wanted to see if there'd be any possible difference as far as figuring out if there's an actual issue with Mac Studio with Red Raw software. And once again, I got very strange results. My MacBook Pro completed this export in under 25 minutes, while Mac Studio completed the test in a little under 45 minutes. So yeah, Apple or Red or both companies have some bugs to work out with Mac Studio. Mac Studio probably would have completed the export in less than 15 minutes based on all the other tests I ran up to this point. I want to show some love to my Premiere Pro users out there who want to know what editing performance is like between these two machines. And that's why I did a test on both called Puget Bench, which is a popular benchmarking solution for DaVinci and Adobe apps made by Puget Systems. This benchmark consists of tests that stress the CPU, GPU, and both simultaneously for things like encoding, multicam playback, etc. My MacBook Pro only took about four more minutes than Mac Studio to complete the benchmark, so both machines did the test in under 30 minutes, and my MacBook Pro got a score of 609 compared to Mac Studio's 817, which sounds about right based on the power difference 
differences between these two machines. And so while Premiere Pro still doesn't quite have the same level of optimization for Mac that Final Cut Pro does, it's still a nice experience to use on these machines. Lightroom Classic is a popular photo editing application, and I want to do a time export between these two machines. And so I took over 1300 raw 25 megapixel photos shot by myself and did a timed export of 100% quality to JPEG format. My MacBook Pro only took 15 minutes and 35 seconds to complete, and Mac Studio came in a little bit faster at 12 minutes and 54 seconds. So for photo editing, the MacBook is clearly the better value option when you consider that the display is being included, and only takes a few extra more minutes to complete a task like this. But either way, both machines are extremely impressive for photo editing, and I just remember when I was doing this exact same export on my Mac Mini with the i7 processor and an eGPU attached over a year ago, and it took maybe over an hour to complete in comparison to these machines. So overall, Mac Studio with M1 Max really only dominates M1 Pro for situations like 8K video rendering, but for pretty much everything else, the differences in performance alone aren't that huge. And so the question now is, do you take the MacBook Pro because of the portability and the fact that it's going to offer comparable performance for most tasks? Or do you go with Mac Studio for the ports galore and the overall better performance for the same cost and then go buy a monitor and keyboard and mouse on top of that? The answer to that is going to be very different for everyone, especially for those who already have a monitor and desk setup ready to go. Personally, if I didn't have both machines already, I'd go with the MacBook purely for that display in combination with the already great performance. This package as a whole for two grand is simply unmatched in my opinion, and despite Mac Studio offering substantially better performance for 8K video, it simply isn't the better value overall if you're asking me. But Regardless, I hope this video helped in any potential decision making. But that's gonna be about it for this one. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for future content like this because we've still got more Mac Studio content on the way. All right, I'll talk to you guys in the next one.